Today, it's all about a third-party tool that's been developed for Zwift that provides functionality that people have been asking for for a very long time. So over my shoulder there, you can see the Zwift Activity Monitor in action, and it's providing real-time average watts or watts per kilo over different time periods. I could monitor my intensity factor in real time, and there's also splits and much, much more with this tool. It's definitely one for the data junkies out there. Now, a few things to cover before I go deep into this one. At this point in time, it's PC only, so those who run Zwift on a Windows machine. And as this tool is only new, it's what I would call in rapid development. So there's ongoing changes almost on a daily basis, so what you see today may be a little different tomorrow, possibly a little better. Okay, let's jump over to the Zwift Activity Monitor webpage and see what it's all about. Kicking off with the official description of this tool, and they say here that the application allows Zwift users to monitor their moving average power and FTP in real time. It also provides valuable metrics to the writer, such as average and normalized power, intensity factor, and what they call total suffer score, as opposed to training stress score. There might be a copyright little thing there, they're sidestepping with that terminology. For the racer and time trialist, there's also the ability to configure distance-based splits with optional goals. So there's quite a bit to this. Jumping down to the section on how this works, and they've provided full detail on exactly what they're doing at the back end to provide you this information on screen. So the Zwift Activity Monitor, ZAM for short, monitors outgoing network packets generated by the Zwift application and aggregates the data into statistical moving averages. So they're looking at things such as current output, current heart rate if you're wearing a heart rate monitor, distance traveled, and time spent riding. There's a link there on screen to the packet capture library that you'll need installed to make this tool work, and the installation link that I'll put in the video description below. Once installed, on first start, you'll be presented with a configuration screen. Now, the defaults are usually pretty good to get you up and running, but there's full details here on screen. And again, I'll link to this website below if you want to run through all of this. It goes without saying, but you do need the correct user information under that tab as well, so it can give you the correct information on screen. Under the Collectors tab of the configuration is where you configure what you want shown on screen. So you can see there you can go from 5 seconds down to 90 minutes. You can show average, average max in either watts or watts per kilo, or you can hide those fields. And there's also an FTP column there as well if you want to measure that in real time. The Splits Configuration tab is a recent addition to the Zwift Activity Monitor, and it's very, very powerful. You can have splits come up on screen every X kilometers or miles. In here, the example is every 5. And you can also configure goals within this, so a goal time or a goal distance, and there's a plus or minus indicator on screen to show you where you're at if you're on target or not. Super powerful stuff for such a little tool. As this is a third-party tool, you will need to start the tool after you've started your Zwift session and then simply hit start from there. It's also advisable to hit auto start on that packet capture, so that process kicks in as soon as the tool is opened. They've also done some really interesting things with team time trial starts as they refer to the WTRL there. So you can set an offset of when that timer starts, so all your stats on the screen are to the second accurate for your start time. Yesterday I used this tool to write up Elp to Zwift and it came in very handy. Let's have a look at that. Okay, before jumping into my Zwift session, I'll run through my configuration, which is mostly defaults here with the Zwift Activity Monitor. I'm not running Zwift, but the tool still does appear as an overlay on screen, so I can run you through my configuration. Okay, from here, if I click on Analyze and take you through my options, you can see my configuration here. So the network, I believe, is all defaults. I've left it as. The packet monitoring is running on start, so that's already started. User profile there, GP Llama, who's the default user, weight 74, threshold 300, which I believe is around about what I have set it to on Zwift. The collectors. I have them all set to watts and watts for average max too, and I have the FTP column hidden. I don't really care about that. What I do care about though is real time average watts for the rolling average and also the average max in watts through here for what I have shown on screen. That can be easily changed by hitting edit and then doing the configuration changes there. There's also splits as I showed in the intro. They're configured to show every five kilometers there. Again, edit on that. You can set some goals, I'll leave that alone. And a new recent addition, again, as I said, rapid development, there's a lapping tool, which can be done automatically or manually via a lap button. Very cool stuff. So under here, if I hit edit, measurement, uh, metric or imperial, manual via a lap button, automatic via a lap trigger, and distance and time configurations there, as you please. I'll hit cancel on that. As I said, most are using defaults today for my session up Elp to Zwift. Let's get on the bike. Okay, rolling through the jungle before the fun begins on the steeper slopes of Elta Zwift, and you can see there my stats aren't quite complete, and that's because I haven't completed either 5 minutes or 20 minutes just yet. Only 1 minute has passed, 
to give an average rolling one minute and an average max of one minute. So as the tool passes the five minute mark, that'll then set an average max time for five minutes, which populates that field. And a little further up the climb as the numbers continue to climb as well for my one minute and five minute averages and max averages. Just about to pass the 20 minute mark here with the activity monitor elapsed time. And that will then give me a 20 minute max, which is 2.14, right there on screen. Now what's special about Alp de Zwift and why I chose this route today is because Alp de Zwift has its own sector stats. And I'm going to pause this at exactly one minute into sector 17 here to see how that goes with the rolling one minute average from the activity monitor. They should be very, very close, if not identical. Okay, we'll hit pause on the one minute mark right here. And we have heart rate on the Zwift sector stats of 166 average with 253 average watts. And looking up at the one minute row for the activity monitor, I have 251 watts, that's pretty close, and 166 watts average heart rate for that sector for the last minute, which is absolutely spot on. Definitely more numbers on the screen than you can poke a spoke at. And next up for the fun and games up Elta Zwift is to remove the HUD and still have the activity monitor there on screen. Though it's not quite in the best position, so I'll shove that off to the left. And away we go, a nice clean heads up display with my data still shown. Now I was running the companion app at the same time, so I was getting my real time stats. But if I had a thought ahead, I would have changed the analysis down to at least having five second or three second average. I think five second is the smallest you can get with this tool. So I click on analyze and yeah, five seconds. And I can't change that in real time as the analyzer is doing it. So I'll need to hit stop and then start again. So I'll leave it as is. But if you're gonna run no HUD and still want that information on the screen, I'd change it into five second average and right on. Okay, HUD back on and we move the activity monitor back in place and I'll continue on. As I wrap up my ride here, you can see on screen there, there's a summary of the ride with normalized power, intensity factor and TSS. You can also email that to yourself if you have your email configured. So there's an overview of the tool in action and how I used it up Elta Zwift, but that's only just skimming the surface of what this can do. Okay, wrapping this one up for today, there we have it, an overview of the Zwift Activity Monitor third-party tool for Zwift on PC. A very, very powerful little tool for those who love diving into the numbers. I'll put links in the video description below to this tool and also their Facebook group, which is a great place to provide feedback for the developers. There's no question whatsoever if Zwift provided this functionality in-game across all platforms, it would be a very welcome update. Let's just hope they don't encrypt that network traffic anytime soon. Okay, with that, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.